A couple things. Obviously, we're going to talk about social media today. One thing that I just can't stress enough is everyone is involved in social media. I don't know if anyone got my little invitation and I said kind of tongue in cheek, if you're like everyone in the world, you're involved in social media. One thing I want to point out and one thing that always amazes me is that everyone is doing social media or most of us are doing social media, but a lot of people are not doing it well. And I don't mean that as a slam to anyone. I don't mean to be disrespectful. I'm just saying that it opens up the door to so many possibilities. And if you just do it a little bit better than your competition, it's a huge, huge advantage. So don't focus today on how am I going to be the ultimate social media expert? What am I going to do that's just going to set the world on fire? Just focus on this. What if you could learn one or two things to just make what you're doing a little bit better? How would that affect your business? And that's what we want to focus on today. Is that fair? So if we accomplish that, we've had a good morning. So I think I introduced myself six or seven times. I'm Chris DeMeo. I lead the marketing and business development teams at Easy Marketing. I also want to point out Kelly Hoffman, our marketing manager, is also our master of PowerPoints and master of many, many things. So she takes all this crazy information, all this great data, and puts it into a very organized format for us to see. If we want to recognize people for doing a difficult job well, how would you like to do the marketing for a marketing company? Everyone in there thinks they're the best marketer there ever was, and Kelly has to show us all how things are really going to be done. So hats off to Kelly. About us, Easy Solution is our parent company. We've been around 21 years. Started with a local gentleman by the name of Tom Malesic, knocking on doors selling websites 21 years ago. We've grown to two different divisions of Easy Solution. There's Easy Marketing, which is what we're going to talk about today. That's our, our full service marketing agency. We have 28 people on our marketing team, and we boast we've built over 2,000 websites over the years. We have hundreds and hundreds of companies that we helped. Most of our companies are local. We do have some national companies. We no longer have international companies because we got tired of time, time changes and exchange rates and all the other stuff. So we're local and some national. Then there's Easy Computer Solutions. This is our IT division. This is the division that keeps everything up and running. What we want to talk about today, and forgive me if I get a drink every now and again, my mouth gets dry on these. And I've been told by a couple experts that there's a reason for that. Do you know what it is? Dawn Kelly? Talk I talk too much. <laughs> That's good sound medical advice, medical opinions, OK? What we're going to learn today, why social media is important for your business. That seems like such a, such a, a no-brainer thing, but people look at it and maybe don't focus on it as much as they should, or they don't devote as much time, effort, and energy into it as they could. We're also going to talk about specifically how to plan a social media strategy. Social media is not something you should just kind of do or we do it when there's nothing else to do because when is there never anything else to do? There's always something else you can do. Make time for this. Make a strategy for it. Make a plan for it. Does that guarantee success? No. But it increases the odds of success exponentially with a plan. Choose the right social media platform. What ones are you using? Is it just the one you like the best? Or is it the one that your customers, your target audience uses for their information? Best practices for creating great social media content. There's rules to it, guys. Let's make sure we're using best practices as we do things. How to put together a campaign. Campaigns are a little bit shorter. There are more concentrated plans to get your desired result. And then how to track and measure. Who here works for someone? Who here works for a sole owner, an entrepreneur? Who here thinks these people can be crazy sometimes? Who here thinks, oh my gosh, they make it? Yeah, everyone in our company. <laughs> and, and I say that lovingly, I say that respectfully. If these people weren't crazy, they wouldn't have their business. 
if these people weren't just so off the wall intense, they wouldn't be successful like they are. And guys, for a lot of us, that's why we work for them. They drive things. They make things happen. They're also very, very skeptical. You always have to prove to them that what you're doing is the right thing. We're going to help with proving that it's the right thing by tracking and measuring. Who here works for someone that likes analytics? Who likes analytics themselves? Here's a great way to do it. A lot of times marketing people, I just want to promote things, all right? We need to track. We need to know what's working. This way we focus on the good things and we shy away from the things that aren't working. Or we improve the things that aren't working. And lastly, what's the future? Has anyone seen social media change a little bit over the years? Has it changed in the last couple months? Who's involved in it now that never was involved in it before? Our great elected officials. They have to find, an, and I don't mean, well, I do mean to be a little disrespectful. They have to find a certain outrage of the week because it takes the focus off what they're not focusing on when they focus on social media, okay? And if that was disrespectful, I apologize. But. So social media marketing. Guys, one thing, probably the, the, the biggest advice I've ever given anyone, if there's, any, if there's ever been a pearl of wisdom that ever came out of my mouth, it's this. Don't let what you don't know stand in the way of what you do know, all right? You don't have to be someone who lives on social media to do well at it for your business. You don't have to be someone who's constantly tweeting and inst Instagramming and posting every second to be good at it. Do you know what it is, guys? It's marketing. It's using a certain tool to market effectively. Marketing has not changed in many, many decades. Marketing is very simply telling, having the right message and displaying it to the right people at the right time. Social media is a vehicle by which we do that. And it's a vehicle that many, many, many billions of people are using. Everyone's on social media. So why wouldn't you use it as a way to get your message across? And if you're going, well, Chris, I'm doing that, great. Are you doing it well? And if you're doing it well, can you do it better? That's what we're looking for. So social media, what is social media about? It's about conversation. It's not in your face selling, it's starting a conversation. It's about building relationships. It's about engaging with people. So what is social media marketing? It's building the relationships with the right people by engaging them at the right time with meaningful, relevant conversations. So basically, you're taking marketing and you're just using a platform that's out there and using it effectively. It is not a platform to sell in your face, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. It's let's start a conversation. Listen to what I have to say. I'm listening to what you say and I'm paying attention to it and I'm trying to give you value for that information. Make sense? If it doesn't, would you tell me? All right, tell me at the end. So why is it so important? 3.5 billion people use social media in the world. That's 77% of the population of the US. So eight out of every 10 people are using social media. Do you think that's a good avenue to market with? 30% of all the time spent online, think about all the time you spend online, 30% of that is spent on social media sites. So one out of three people on their phone at any given time are on social media. And 90% of all businesses use social media. So show of hands, not to embarrass anyone. Who is not using social media in their business? Thank you for being brave. I'm only going to make fun of you six or seven times. No, I'm just kidding. Sort of use it. And that's a good, fair answer. We have an expression at Easy Marketing. We always do, sometimes. Does anyone, can anyone relate to that? And here's the thing, 90% of all businesses are using it. What did I say to back that up? How effective are those 90% of businesses? In my opinion, in our opinion, not very. It doesn't mean that just because everyone's using it, they're doing it well. 
you will really stand out by doing things just a little better than everyone else. So benefits of it. It's a great way to build brand awareness. It's a great way to encourage engagements. You don't want to push things at people. You want people to come to you. You want people to go back and forth with you. It's a great way to build authority. It's a great way to show everyone that you're the thought leaders, meaning that you are the experts in your industry. It's a fantastic way to build loyalty. We like to say we don't just want clients or customers, we want brand evangelists, meaning people that love you, people that talk about you, people that think, you know, oh my gosh, these guys are doing okay. What's one of the advantages of a brand evangelist? Anybody? I'm sorry? They'll tell other people. What else? I, they'll do your marketing work for you. Excellent. I thought I heard crickets there for a minute. Thank you. Okay. And I'll just say one more thing. They'll forgive you if you make a mistake. As long as you've done things mostly right. Brand evangelists will also do what? They will turn on you because they love you. And the, the line between love and hate can be sometimes thin. So you've got to take care of these brand evangelists. But they will be your best customers ever. They'll tell everyone how great you are. They'll do your work for you if you'll let them and if you've earned that. And lastly, it's a great way to do content marketing. And content marketing is a great path toward SEO, search engine optimization. Content marketing used effectively is the best way for you to be found when someone's doing a search. Uses of social media. Things you should be doing. Here's something that you're going to hear more and more about these days, and maybe you've been hearing about it forever. It starts with listening. When you talk about social media, and we talked about the business owners, and we talked about how respectfully, lovingly, sometimes they, they can be a little wild. Are, is there anyone in here who has someone in their company, whether it be their boss, the owner, their People they work with that kind of poo-poo social media. By the way, that's a marketing term, poo-poo. Yeah, anyone? Raise your hands. Be proud. They do this, but here's the way we have to present it. How much of an advantage would it be if you understood what keeps your customers up at night? How much of an advantage would you have if you knew what was driving them nuts? How much of an advantage would you have if you knew the answer to their problems and you could provide it? If you're paying attention, if you're listening on social media, you'll have that answer. And that's what we've got to get the owners, the bosses, the people that may not be experts in it to understand. It's a great way to find out what's inside the customer's head. It's a great way to find out what makes them tick. It's a great way to find out what keeps them up at night. And you can do that a couple different ways. Way number one is just by paying attention. Way number two is there are different things you can use, different tools you can use for this. Okay? But it starts with social listening. And, and again, identify pain points. You can do some research on your competitor. Guess what? Your competitor puts all their stuff out there, and who's, who has access to it? Everyone. Who has access to all your stuff? Make sure you're doing it pretty good. And it also is a great way, a great path to customer service. You know what people care about. It's a pretty simple concept. Find out what people care about and give it to them. Not that complicated. Also, social influencing. Again, social media, a great way to build brand awareness. It's a great way to show everyone thought leadership. Hey, we're the experts in the industry because we understand what you need, and here's some things we're going to put out there to help address that. This is how we can help you solve your problems. This is how we can help you sleep at night. Here's good, useful information that we're going to give you. It also helps build authority. By being the expert, by showing you're the leader in the industry, you now have become the leader in the industry in the eyes of your clients. It's also great for social networking. Build relationships through this. Use influencer marketing, meaning here's some pretty cool people that think we're good. It helps build trust. After you've done all this, then it's OK to do what? Now it's OK to do a little prospecting. 
Now it's okay to do a little selling. Now it's okay to try and generate some leads. Now it's okay to do some ads because now they're more willing to listen to you. Now they're more willing to pay attention to you. Now they may be more willing to do business with you because you are the experts. You understand what they need. You've given them tools that they can use to help themselves be more successful, to be more content, to be more smart, whatever it is that you're helping them with. Now, okay, so here's what it's all about. Let's talk about creating a strategy. Number one, first part of any strategy, pardon my back, Medical reason I need a drink? Talk too much. When we talk about goals, anyone who's attended our seminars before, you've seen this screen before, obviously we didn't coin it. Make goals smart. Smart means that they're specific, they're measurable, so you have to be able to say, I did this and here was a result and I can prove that. They're attainable, make sure they're realistic. Make sure they're relevant, okay? You don't want to track things that mean, mean nothing, and that they're timely. There's a beginning time and an end time. And during this time, we have achieved this. And by SMART goals, we mean things like, don't just say, I want to increase brand awareness. Say things like, I want to get X page followers and achieve X average reach per post by the end of 2019. Be as specific as you can. Don't be nebulous with this. This is what drives bosses, business owners, yourselves, committees crazy. Show what you've actually done and show what your, show what your goals are going to be and, and know whether or not you achieve that. And again, don't say I want to get more leads. I want to increase landing page form fills by X percent in the third quarter. Be specific in how you do that. And if you did, great. You know what you did to get there if you have a strategy. If you didn't, you know where you fell short. You know what you did right. You know what you can improve upon. It helps you get where you want to go. And now you have a benchmark. Now you have a starting point so you can show improvement. So part of a strategy. You got your goals now. You better know your audience. How can you create a strategy? How can you create a plan? What kind of stuff are you going to put out there if you don't know what your audience cares about? So part of the strategy, know what they care about. Know what they're talking about. Also, where are they spending their time? Are they going to certain sites? Are they going to certain forums? Are they doing certain things? The more you know, the better. How do you know these things? Through social listening, by paying attention, by keeping an eye on what people are doing. And lastly, who or what do they follow? And again, hint, thanks Kelly, we left a hint in there. Use social listening. Okay, listen. People will tell you everything you need to know if you will simply listen. Has anyone in here ever taken a sales course of any kind? One of the things they tell you is this. Tell me about your ears, Brian. The, the relationship between your ears and your mouth. Because I know you know the answer. You have two, ear, two ears and one mouth. Use them proportionately. All right? Same thing here. Listen before you decide. Listen before you speak. Listen before you jump into a campaign. Don't think you know what the audience wants. Know what the audience wants. Know it ahead of time. Know your competition. Again, years ago, the old days of just a few months ago, probably today, everyone's out. We've got to study the competition. Let's see what the competition's doing. Call them up on a phone. Pretend you're a client. There's lots of different things you can do, and that, that's effective. It works. Go in there, let's hire a secret shopper. I'm not saying those are bad. What I'm saying is there's never been a time in history where your competition would tell you so much about them and what they offer. But are you taking advantage of that knowledge? Make sure you are. Know, what, know your competition. What are they doing? Are they on Facebook? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they, on, you know, are they part of Snapchat? What are they doing? How often do they post? Who here follows the competition? Great. Good job. Keep going. Who here is going to follow the competition? Good, thank you. If you got nothing else from today, that's a plus. That coffee in Danish, it's a good day, okay? And what are, their, what are their best posts? When you see something, give them kudos if they deserve it. Hey, they really got us on that one, boy. Woo, that's okay. We just got smarter. We just got better. 
we learned something that they taught us, that's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. Let's learn from them. It's okay not to be great at something. Let's get better at it. And don't try and be the best tomorrow. Just be a little better tomorrow than you were today. And, and how much engagement are they getting? Who's coming after them? Who's following them? How many people think that they're great? How many people think that they're the thought leaders in the industry? How many people think they're the experts? That's who you want to go after. Know your brand. Guys, it's important. Know who you are. Be true to who you are. Does anyone ever follow Wendy's? Anyone ever follow their ads? Can I ask, raise your hand, please, if, if you get Wendy's ads. I have a theory. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Not y younger people. Wendy's has a reputation for being a little bit what? A little bit edgy. Kelly used the term snarky. I love that term. Okay, But it's who they are. If that's not you, don't do this. But here's a Wendy's ad. Okay, And first of all, the iceberg that sank the Titanic was frozen too. That's obviously for their frosty. But here's something on, on social media chat. The irrelevant streamer. Okay, I want Wendy's, but my girlfriend wants McDonald's. What do I do? Now, what would most people say? Well, you know, take her to Wendy's, be kind. Uh, what does Wendy say? Hey, there's plenty of fish in the sea. She doesn't want Wendy's, get rid of her, all right? She's just not worth the trouble, okay? But that's their brand, that's who they are. You guys each have your own brand, and that's for another discussion, but you've got to be true to who you are. Don't try and be something you're not. If that's not your style, don't do that. Show people what you're all about, and, and what's your mission? What's your tone? What's your language? Are you using your logos, your colors, your fonts, your images, your content? Are you using that consistently? And is it true to who you are? I need a drink for content calendar. And when I say drink, guys, I'm drinking water. All right, just, just to be clear. Why do you want to have a content calendar? It's something we feel very strongly about. Anybody? I'll field this one. You want to have a content calendar so that you take everything that you're doing, and number one, you know what's working. Number two, you make sure you're doing it on a schedule. You make sure you're doing it as often as you can. You're keeping track of what you're posting so you can follow certain rules. And we're going to talk about rules of thirds in just about 40 seconds. Okay? The idea of the content calendars, it helps you decide what you want to post and when you want to post it, and it takes the guesswork out of it. How many people do not work with a content calendar? And don't mean to embarrass you, but you're like most people, okay? If you don't have one, you may think, well, I'm always posting. Well, I always post that stuff. The idea of the calendar is it lets you know for, for a fact what you're doing and when. And again, we have, we've supplied a content calendar, and we have a link to our content calendar online if you want to download it. Part of the strategy, too, optimize your social profiles. Has anyone signed up for our next seminar? It's June the 7th on SEO. You guys all should. You're all invited. Okay? When we talk about SEO for your website, we're talking about ways for your website to be found when someone's doing a search for a specific topic or idea. You need to optimize your social profile as well. What do you optimize? Your name, your contact information, the logo should be optimized, the about us should be optimized, your URL, you should optimize for keywords. Why? Because if people are searching, think social media optimization. Not just search engine optimization, think social media optimization. You're going to hear more and more about that, and it plays very well into SEO. One thing, too, I just want to say, social media is kind of like the second home for your business. Your website is a lot about the brain of your organization. It's about who you are, what you represent, things that you offer. Your social media should show people your heart and your soul. Okay? Your social media should show everyone the culture of the organization. Why do I say that? Not just because Kelly told me to. Why do I say that? Who do you like to do business with? People that you feel that you know. Good. What else? Who else do you want to do business with? People I know and? Say that again. Who said trust? 
Good job. What else? Good, good. People that care about things you care about. All those things are correct. And more and more, I won't say it's definitely a generational thing, but younger people are more socially conscious than our generation was. It's just a fact. And I'm saying my generation. I'm 109, okay? But they want to know, they want to do business with people they trust, people they care about, people like them, and people that care about things that I care about. People that are socially conscious, just like I am. Social media is the way you get that concept across. Show people your heart. Show people your soul. Show people what you care about. That's how you engage people. That's the difference between someone who's going to follow you, pay attention to you, engage with you, versus someone who will just buy from you once and you're never going to see again. That's the difference. Or that can be the difference if you do it right. Okay, so... We put together a strategy. We know what everything is. We put together a strategy. How about choosing platforms? Okay. What platforms are best for you? To decide that. How do you know what's best for you? Are you a B2B business? Who here is a B2B business, meaning you sell to other businesses? Good. Who sells directly to the consumer? Okay. Is social media good or bad for either of those? Should you be using social media if you're B2C? Yes. Should you be using social media if you're B2B? Resoundingly, yes. And this is where that marketing term, poo-poo, sometimes comes in. A lot of people think, well, you don't understand, Chris. People don't go on Facebook to buy my products. Has anyone ever heard that? Do you know how many times I've heard that? Who wants to? I don't even know. A lot. How's that for a number? A lot. I track this stuff, so I know. Um, it works. And it helps with SEO, and it helps people understand who you are. And B2B is absolutely appropriate for social media, okay? Make no mistake, it is absolutely appropriate. And you know what? If I were you, I would hope that my competition didn't think it was, because it gives me that much of an edge. And I'll say that very, like statistically, if 90% of companies are using it, I'm going to tell you that maybe 20 to 25% are using it well and being effective. Huge opportunity. So question to ask. B2B, B2C. Who is your target audience? What's their demographics? What are they interested in? What are their pain points? What are your goals? Okay, that comes into account too. It's not just about your audience. What do you guys want out of it? What's... What are you talking about in terms of what do you want to do with goals? Awareness? Do you want to try and sell? Do you want to educate? What resources and budget do you have? There's got to be a budget for social media, guys. More and more, it's about pay to play with social media. I won't say they figured it out because they knew it for a long time. But what they did, they drew us in. They made us dependent. And then they jacked it up. Okay? That's what they did. And it makes sense. And... If you want to be found, if you want to be relevant, you got to pay a little bit. It's just how it is. We don't have to like it, but we have to recognize it and we have to embrace it. Let's talk about popular platforms. And I'm going to go behind my screen so I'm not wandering in front of everyone. By far, the most popular platform is Facebook. How popular is it? 2.2 billion people are on Facebook. 2.2 billion people. Now, Facebook, and people will say, well, is Facebook starting to shrink? You know, I know they lost a lot of people. Anyone heard that? You know how many they lost? 15 million. When you're talking about 2.2 million, what does that mean to you? Or 2.2 billion, what does that mean? Eh. That's like if I came in tomorrow and I said, guess what, guys? I lost a pound. <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> Big deal. I think you found it again, okay? F yes, 15 million people left. Doesn't matter. 2.2 billion people use Facebook. YouTube, 1.9 billion people are on YouTube. Here's the thing, too. Big edge. Does everyone here know that they should have good videos and they should be on YouTube? Everyone know that? Who disagrees with that? How many of you have good videos that you're putting on YouTube? Great job. Great job, great job. How many of us really want good videos? We just don't have them yet. That's most of us. 
we know that YouTube is one of the top, top social media sites ever. Only 9% of companies are effectively using video. You want a competitive edge? Make that 10% and you're in there. Okay, it's huge. We all know to do it, and video is probably cheaper than you think. If you, have, if you have a source for video, call them up. If you don't have a source, call me. I'll help you find one. That's not a plug for us. We, don't do, we do everything but video, and we don't print in-house. I'll plug my good friend. Anyone in, video, in the video industry here? I was going to give you a plug. Derek Lau, Ada Media, Rachel Ballantyne over at Triode. Lots of good media companies in town that do good work, and they're not very expensive. Okay. Um, what's that? 1.5 billion people. Facebook Messenger, 1.3 billion people. Instagram, lowly, weak, little 1 billion people are using it. Then there's organizations like Reddit, 330 million. Twitter, 326 million. And LinkedIn is 303 million. Who here is on LinkedIn? Very good. Who thinks they're very good at LinkedIn? Good. It's a huge advantage. And LinkedIn, you may say, well, there's not that many people on it. But who's on it? Business people, professionals. How many of you sit at your desk like me and have LinkedIn open almost all day? On one, in, you have a window open, a screen. Right. And I'll tell you, I think I do LinkedIn very well. And I say that without bragging because LinkedIn or Danielle does a lot of it for me. So if you, have, if you have that luxury, great thing to do. If you don't, Danielle, how much time a day do you spend on LinkedIn for me? Ten minutes. And I'm difficult. Some of you people that are good, spend ten minutes a day on LinkedIn. You'll make a huge impact. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's talk about it individually. Facebook, active users. It grew. Since we've been here, it went from 2.2 to 2.32 billion people using Facebook. Chris doesn't know how to read a slide. Demographics, 47% male, 53% female. 50-50. All ages, 18 to 64. But one thing to remember about Facebook, 30% of the audience is between 25 and 34. So people are using it. What it's great for, B2C and appropriate for some, if not most, B2B businesses. Um, it's great for any industry, fashion, auto, e-commerce. Pros, it is the largest social media network. It's great for advertising. It's easy to drive traffic. The cons, more and more it's becoming pay to play. Even if you're not putting ads out there, you've got to pay money to post. It is, it's organic and it's good, but less and less people are, are, being, are being found by organic. You've got to boost those posts. If you don't know how to do that, give us a call. We can walk you through that or help you out with it. And it's time consuming. You've got to spend some time managing it. And here's one of the biggest challenges and best thing for us and our business and anyone who does social media for a living, it changes. If you were an expert and you were great at it a couple months ago, it's changed. It's not the same. The way we did social media or Facebook specifically, the way we did social media as a business six months ago is not the same as we do it today. And if we don't change, if we didn't change, if we don't continue to change, we're not going to be as effective. That's why it's very important to track what you're doing so that we know how effective we're being and we know where we're effective and we know where we want to improve. YouTube, 1.5 billion people. Overall, it's balanced with age, gender. It does skew heavily based on the categories that you're in. Everyone loves video, though. Everyone loves video. When you talk about it being good for searches and SEO, Who's the big player? Who determines where people get sent with SEO? Google. And who owns YouTube? And who does Google love above all else? Google. So great, great medium for that, OK? And it's great. Pros, people stay on it for a long time. People will watch videos. They'll pay attention to videos for a long time. Um, people are on YouTube an average of 40 minutes a day. Now, that's not one video. That's not, they found one great video and they're watching it, okay? But people are looking at it. It's great for SEO because Google loves Google. And there's less and less competition because what percentage of businesses have good video? 9%. That leaves, not that smart, but that's 91%. That's wide open. 
guys, if you do nothing else well, get some good video, learn to do that well, learn to optimize it, learn to get it out there, learn to create a message with it. It's going to be great. I can't promise you, but I'm going to tell you, you got a good shot at that. Instagram. Active users, only a lowly billion. 68% of this are of the audience is female, 32% male, and it's dominated by 18 to 34 year olds like me. Okay. I, my kid, I have two 13 year olds, I have twins. And I was going over these slides and I, was, I made a comment like that kidding around and my kids are making fun of me. And I said, look, if you add these two together, that's my demographic. And my daughter, Ella, who does math in her head pretty easily says, dad, you're still older than that. So she's right. Okay. But dominated by younger crowds. Who's it good for? B2C brands with high impact images. It's great for travel, fashion, beauty, food and beverage, wellness. Pros, it's growing fast, okay? They have very loyal communities. Instagram followers are loyal. It's, highly, it's high activity, it's engaging. Cons, there's no clickable links in anything that's unpaid. And there's limited demographic reach. It is for young people. If you're trying to reach a younger audience, it's a great way for you to go. If you are trying to reach old guys like me, we're less and less on that. Twitter, great for B2C, some B2B. It's great for news, information, topics, retail, finances, travel. Who's in it? 50-50, male, female. This surprised me a little bit looking at statistics. 79% of, of the users are outside the US. Did everyone know that but me? I was a little surprised by that. Pros. It's about customer service. It's direct. There's a lot of personal conversation. You get the voice of the owner in this. You're talking right to the source when you're talking about Twitter. Cons, it is time sensitive. It's got a very, very short shelf life. And you can be subject to a lot of negative feedback, criticism, and more and more it's going outside the US. So if you're selling in the US, you may want to look at whether or not that's still the best way for you to go. LinkedIn, my opinion, huge opportunity for growth, for promotion, for activity on LinkedIn. Again, who here is using LinkedIn? Who here has at least 500 followers? Th or or link connections, I'm sorry, uh, 1,000? Good, lots of opportunity for this, okay? 260 million users, and they are 56% male, 44% female, so 50-50, we're talking about college graduates, 70% of users outside the US, so again, you can connect internationally with this. Best for B2B, some B2C recruitment. Does anyone in the room have a problem attracting talent right now? Is anyone's workforce not where it should be? Do we all use LinkedIn to recruit? Again, depends what you're recruiting. If you're recruiting professionals, we're looking for a guy like Ray, we're looking on LinkedIn. If you're looking for a truck driver, if you're looking for you know, a healthcare worker, it might, might be a little bit different medium, but great for recruitment. Financial, employment, technology, manufacturing, marketing, education, the pros, you're talking about business professionals. If you wanna connect business professional to business professional, you can't get a better way to go than LinkedIn. You're going after who? decision makers and it's a great way to publish business content and we're going to talk more about LinkedIn in a little bit this is too where we're going to talk about the rule of thirds and I'll show you we have some examples of some good uses of social media and cons it's expensive to run ads on LinkedIn has anyone ever run ads on LinkedIn it's expensive um, it can be a clunky ad platform it's not seamless like some of the others and there's lots of spam, there's lots of catfishing, lots of fake profiles on, on LinkedIn. Yes, sir? I don't, some people work at their jobs. Um, <laughs> God, uh, I, I, I don't, and, and um, I do because, again, we do post a lot on there. I look for some business connections on there. I, I follow some clients of ours on there. So, so no, well, who, who, who has it open all day like Chris? No one will admit it. So, some of you guys work at your jobs, guys like me. So, so I don't know. I don't know. 
But I like it. It's a great medium, and I converse with people back and forth all day. I connect with people. It's somewhere, too, if I'm trying to connect with someone, I need to get a meeting, we, got to touch, we have to touch base on something. I've just found if I send them an email, it's one thing. If I send something through LinkedIn, I get responses immediately. And, and I don't know why, but it just seems to work that way. Well, I guess why is because people, oh, it's LinkedIn, it must be important. Um, other platforms, Google My Business. If you are a brick and mortar business and you want street traffic or people to walk in, you've got to be on Google My Business. Pinterest, highly visual. Demographic of Pinterest, what percent women are on Pinterest? Overwhelming, overwhelming. It's visual, it has a longer shelf life. Women look for it. If you're looking for things that are visual, artsy, like our, our friends in the back, the artists, might be a good platform for you, for your furniture, for your paintings. Great way to go there. Snapchat, Reddit, you guys familiar with Reddit? Reddit is the front page of the internet. Okay. We had that conversation the other day. And Yelp and Foursquare. If you're in the food and beverage industry, hospitality industry, you live and die by Yelp a lot of times. Okay. Some examples. Here's an example of some Facebook marketing. This is a client of ours. This is Lanchester Grill and Hearth. This is our good friend Sam Stolzfus. Stan had, Stan had, or, yeah, Sam had some health concerns recently. He's doing well. We're thankful to have him healthy and active again. But his job, Lanchester Grill, guess what they do there? They sell grills. They sell outdoor kitchens, different things. Social media is a great way for Sam to put people in the picture. When you're talking about selling a grill or you're talking about selling an outdoor kitchen, what are you really selling? Are you really selling a kitchen? Anybody? You're selling the experience. You're selling spending time with your family. You're selling my kids laughing. You're selling my neighbors are going to come over. We're going to drink a beer and giggle. It's going to be fun. Okay. Social media is a great way to do that. And Sam put together some great videos where he's showing where he's out there grilling. He's showing people in the outdoor kitchens. It's a great way to put people in the picture. There's not a better way for Sam to market than with social media. Okay? And that's a guy who was saying, well, I'm not sure it's going to work. But we made him a believer by giving it a little shot. LinkedIn. When you talk about LinkedIn, you should have a company page, depending on the size of the company. If you're the company, You've got your page. But LinkedIn is a company page, but then it has to be individuals associated with the company. In this case, we didn't have any good individuals, any true professionals, so we used me. And on here, these are some different things that I post. And we're going to talk about the rule of thirds in a little bit. But here's something where we talk about professional development. 20 things successful people do every week. We post this. We put it out there. and. We get a lot of feedback. We get a lot of people commenting on this, saying, oh, that was really good. It starts discussions with professionals. Some of these are people I know well. Some of them not so well, but it opens the door. Also, one of the best posts I did, Danielle and I put this together. Has anyone ever watched The Office? You know who Michael Scott is? We did 50 quotes from Michael Scott. And it was something where I say, look, I don't post a lot of spam. I don't spam anyone on LinkedIn. But I was having kind of a rough day. And the post was, hey, listen, sometimes you just have to take a minute and just laugh. The harder it is, has anyone ever had a rough day at work? Maybe you guys are all charmed. I know everyone on my team is going, Chris, yeah, every day is a little rough, OK? But sometimes you just have to laugh. One of the best, one of the best response, uh, the most responded to posts we did, 50 of the best Michael Scott quotes just made everyone laugh. And that's what people said. You know what, Chris? I needed that. Thank you. And then lastly, it can't be, remember I said it's not about, it can't, maybe I didn't say it. I'm going to say it now. It can't be just about you. We post things like our good friends with Blessings of Hope. Does anyone know Blessings of Hope? They're partners in the, the Sertoma Chicken Barbecue, the world's largest chicken barbecue. They're also one of the country's largest food banks. This is the food bank that feeds other food banks. They, they serve millions of meals a year. They feed hungry people, no charge. So when they do something good, 
when we built their website, when we're promoting them, I'm not trying to promote Chris. I'm trying to say, here's blessings of hope. Guys, pay attention. Support these people. They're doing wonderful things. Okay, so we've done that. Now let's create content. We have a strategy. We know who we're going after now. If you're going to tell, if you're going to try and engage people, what do you need to have? A good story. You've got to have something interesting to say. Content that works. Let's talk about what works first. Curated content, meaning things that are specific to your industry, things that show that you're an expert. News articles, blogs, infographics, podcasts. And here's the thing. Does this have to be original content? No. The things that I posted on there weren't things that Chris just made this wonderful stuff up out of his brain and he's sitting and meditating and comes up with all these wonderful things. It's things about other people or things that we share or things that I thought were pretty good. Let's pass it along. So curated content that came from somewhere else. You're still the source of it. You're still the person that made it available. Also interactive. Do polls, quizzes, question and answer. Why? What are we trying to do? Interaction, we're trying to engage people. User generated, how about if you post something where your clients, your prospective clients, people you do business with, what if they have a contest? How about visual? Photos, animated GIFs, stories, live video, quotes, education. Part of what we're trying to do is educate. I'm gonna go one step further than that. In addition to education, it should be edutaining meaning that it has to be educational and entertaining. It can't just be dull and dry and boring. It has to be something that people enjoy learning about. And ads. Ads should do what? Solve a problem. Address a need. Show people that you understand what could help solve their problem. So if these are things that work, what are things that don't work? Seagulls. Seagulls don't work. No. Look at me. Buy my stuff. Social media is not about, hey, buy my stuff. Hey, buy my stuff. Hey, buy my stuff. It doesn't work that way. And again, if you have to answer to someone, if you have to answer to yourself and you're wondering, should I be doing this because I'm not making sales from it, I just can't see that if I've done this, I've gotten this, eventually you'll get there. But it's not about that. It's, in, it's about engaging people. It's about drawing people in. It's about getting people to understand who you are so that they'll contact you. Or when you contact them, they'll do what? Answer the phone. Let you in the front door. They won't tell, they won't tell the receptionist, don't let them in here. Okay? It's not about buy my stuff. It's about engaging, entertaining, showing your heart, showing your soul. And what works the best? Relevance. Okay? And if we ask, well, what does relevance mean? If you take what people are interested in, what people care about, and match it with what you have to say, where the overlap lives, that's relevance. If what you have to say is what people care about, or more specifically, if what people care about is in line with what you do and what you have to say, where they come together is the relevance. So things that are relevant work. And here's the thing. If you say, well, look, I tried social media and it didn't work. And I did this and I did this and I did this. There's a hundred reasons why it's effective. There's a hundred reasons why it isn't. First thing to look at. Ask yourself objectively, fairly, squarely, courageously. This is what I did. This was my message. Did it really matter? Did someone care about what I had to say? Is it what's important to them, or was it just I wanted to say it? I'll tell you a quick story. I like to say, too, it's not about them, it's about you. And it can't be where you're trying to trick someone, where you're saying, like, you're going on and on and on about yourself, and you say, well, look, that's enough about you. Let's talk about, or I'm sorry, that's enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you like about me? I'll tell you a story. Ray and Ray. Such a kind-hearted gentleman. I had lunch with him the other day, and I asked him a question. He started to answer, and I went off on a tangent because it happens. And I'm going, Ray, I'm sorry. That's, that's enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you like about me? 
And Ray is such a gentleman, such a kind-hearted soul, he told me what he liked about me. So thank you, Ray. That's very nice of you. But when we talk about social media, again, it's not about them. Or, I'm sorry, it's not about you. It's about them. And it's about what's relevant to them. What do they care about, and is it what you have to offer? And there are kind-hearted people, generous, warm people like Ray, but there's a lot more people that aren't that nice. So we want to focus on what's important to them mostly. What doesn't work? Don't just post for the sake of posting. I got to do something. We had a, we had a seminar on the marketing process a while back, and we talked about people being guilty of a toxic dump. And a toxic dump is you just say, I've got to do, or I'm sorry, a tactic dump, a tactic dump. I've got to do something. I've got to do something. Let me do this and do this and do this. Some people feel that way about social media. I've got to be on social media. I've got to post. I've got to do things. Don't do it if you don't have a plan. Don't do it if it's not relevant. Don't do it if you haven't thought through it and you don't understand what's important to your audience. Don't just post for the sake of posting. Be consistent with your message. Post regularly. Post often. A content calendar and marketing automation helps with this. How often should you post? What's a good guideline? Facebook, post one or two times a day. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. It's happening. This is what people have hoped for for a long time. It may be realized today. <clears throat> Instagram, you should post once, one or two times a day there. Twitter, 10 tweets a day. You've got to use Twitter all the time. You've got to constantly be posting on Twitter. LinkedIn, every other day. Unless you're really, really interesting like Danielle, you can post more than that. But uh, every other day usually is good. And YouTube, you can post less frequently because you have video. Video has a long shelf life. Video is interesting to people. People share video. So you don't have to post that as much. And let's face it, it's a little more expensive to produce a video than it is for you to come up with some, some other content. You share videos, though, too. Who cursed me? Stacy. Yes. Yeah. Is anyone else is headed about to explode? <laughs> All right. Yes. Okay. It, it is. It is. Yeah. Let, let, let me say this. This is a guideline. This is best practices. What was one of the things, and, and, and thank you for, for saying that. Thank you for saying that. It can be overwhelming. And for many of us, this is what we do in addition to our regular job. Right? The phone doesn't start, stop ringing because I've got a post. I'll say this. We also are focused on making it just a little better. If you're doing nothing, post once a week. If you're, if you're doing nothing, share content because you don't have time to create it. I'm going to say that in this case, something's better than nothing. Just make sure it's relevant. Like, and I just got done saying, well, don't do it just to do it. Do it, make it relevant, but devote 15 minutes in searching. You'll find something and you'll be able to post. Make it a point, though, to do it consistently. I'll also say, and this is, yes, a shameless plug, find someone to do it. We have lots of companies that pay us to do this because it's worth it. And the cost for us to do it is pennies compared to you having to devote someone's time, effort, and energy into doing it. And if it's not us, somebody else. Someone that thinks it's cool, someone that wants to do it on a Saturday. But it's important you need to do it. And again, you don't necessarily have to jump in with best practices. You know, this is the, the guideline right away. But something, and I say something relevant, is better than nothing. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes, I definitely would. Yep. Yeah, and fashion, who, who are you attractive in fashion to? Do you have a younger audience, an older audience? Is it fashion for old fat guys like me? Is it fashion for, for this young lady here? I mean, we, we think differently, all right? We dress very similarly, but we, you know, we both look good. We, no, just, but go ahead. Thanks. I do need a hat.
Well said, and, and I just want to add one thing to that. One thing too, pick one platform, just one, and, and do it as you suggested. Just start there. And apps you use? Hootsuite. Hoot Hootsuite, and actually, I believe it's in. Is it in our package? It was on the slide, but I missed it in my notes. Hootsuite. S U I T E. Yep. Hootsuite. Kelly, what ones am I missing? Hootsuite. Hootsuite buffer. What was the other? Hootsuite and Buffer, if you use those two, it's great. And again, it's a great start. And remember, what's our goal? Just get a little better than we are now. That doesn't mean you're off the hook for doing relevant content. Do one thing, make it relevant, do it right. Start there. And again, I am talking only 15 minutes a week. Hardest part is setting it up. Get that content calendar. And again, genuine offer. If you need help with that, let us know. We're happy to walk you through that stuff. I'm not crazy like, oh my gosh, well, I'm going to build. Talk to me. We'll help you out. Okay, we live here too. Good. Thank you. Good, good comments. Thank you. Now, with, with what you're doing with posting, be visual. People love visual content. Companies that post images earn 87% of all engagements. And again, what do most companies do? They do it okay. Get some good visuals. Be consistent. It gives you a big edge. It also reinforces your branding. It lets people know this is a little bit about us. This is what we're all about. We like puppies and glasses, okay? A little bit about our heart, a little bit about our soul. What does this also say? Like if you saw this on our site, what would, you, what would it say about us? We're fun. We don't take ourselves too seriously. We like to enjoy ourselves. Life's hard enough. Business is hard enough. It's okay to laugh a little bit. It's fine. And be human. Be honest. Be authentic, tell stories, focus on the relationship first. If you were at an event like this and you met someone, would you walk right up and start trying to sell them something? Maybe, I hope not. What would you do first? Here's who I am. Here's what I'm all about. This is what I do. Tell me about, or actually I'd probably start with, hey, tell me what you do. How does that work? Man, I'll bet that's tough. That's next. Find out about them. People, people will care more about you if you care about them a little bit. And here's a good example of that. We work with a company called Tangles. Isn't that good looking hair? That's beautiful hair. Tangles does social media campaigns where they talk about, guess what? Their hair. And the comments are coming from their stylist. When I first read that, it said, Jen is one of our blonde specialists. I didn't know if that meant that Jen was blonde and she was a specialist or she specializes in blonde. Okay, I think it's the latter. Okay? And she talks about all the great things she loves about her job. What does she focus on? Not herself and how wonderful she is and how she's been to this school and oh my gosh, do this and I need more people in my chair. She talks about how much she loves her clients. She talks about how much she loves doing their hair and it makes her feel great when people walk out of her salon and they look like this. I'm looking at Ken and I, all right? We'd love some hair like that, okay? Maybe not quite that much, all right? 
But that's what it's all about. She's not saying, hey, look at me. Hey, buy my services. Come sit in my chair. She's saying, oh my gosh, I love my clients. So-and-so was going to an event. She walked out of there looking like a million bucks. She was confident. Her husband talked about how beautiful she was. That's what they choose to post. Those are the things we help them with, okay? And that's being human. That's being authentic. That's talk about, talking about why they got in the business, what they care about, and what do they care about first? You. It's not about me and the great job I did. It's, oh my gosh, look how beautiful she looked. Look how I made her feel. And, and the bottom line is, do you think people that look great are more confident? Okay, here's where we make it happen. We've got some ideas, we're ready to go. Running a campaign. Number one, focus on your strategy. You've built a strategy. Make sure before you put a campaign together, you stay tuned to it. You make sure you follow it. Why? I, I can't tell you how many people build a strategy, then don't follow it. They get away from it. You put all that good information together, let's make sure we use it. Ask yourself, is this going to help accomplish my goals? Does it serve my audience? Is it really what they care about? Or was it self-serving? Did I want to push an agenda? Or did I talk about, this is what you care about, here's what I have to offer, I think we can get together. And how will this stand out for my competitors? Do you really offer better value? Do you really do something better, faster, smarter, stronger, more efficiently? If not, go back to the drawing board. This is the perfect opportunity to do that. Number two, make sure when you're doing a strategy, you have one big idea. Too many times people say, well, who do you want, it, who do you want this to be attractive to? Who's your audience? Well, everybody. Everybody with money. Well, we don't want to miss this one or this one or this one. No. If you try and make everyone happy, who do you make happy? No one. If you try and appeal to everyone, you're going to appeal to no one. Decide one big idea and then craft a message, making sure it fits in the strategy, making sure it's relevant to your clients, and focus on one thing, one target at a time. Make sure you build a content calendar. You've got to have it laid out to keep you on track. In a content calendar, what do you put in there? the channels that you're going to use, what the content is, how often you're going to post, when you're going to post, tips. You want to customize for each channel. It's a little bit different depending on the audience and what platforms you're using. Be consistent. Check insights. Insights are basically tools you can use to tell you what you need to know about the campaigns. And then remember the rule of thirds. Do you guys remember the rule of thirds? Because we didn't do it yet. Rule of thirds. When we talk about the rule of thirds, when you're posting, try and follow this. In the old days of just a few months ago, a year ago, we used to talk about the 80-20 rule. Do 80% more like lighthearted engagement, 20% selling. Now we're saying it should be a third, a third, a third. And the third is number one, start with sharing. Share resources, share tips, share industry news. Focus on things that your audience is interested in. Focus on things your audience wants to hear. A third is interaction. Try and engage with your audience as much as you can. And then a third is going to be promotion. That's where it's okay to let people know who you are and what you have to offer and that you want to do business with them. It's okay to let them know that. Because you've now offered what before you did that? Value. You showed them who you were. You showed them your brain. You showed them your heart. You showed them your soul. Now it's okay to promote. So promote your brand, your products, your services. Here's a sample content calendar. And again, you guys have one in front of you. Please feel free to use it. And you guys have a link where you can download it and take a look at it. Okay. Um, one of the things, too, when you talk about a social calendar, we want to make sure that you share it with your whole team. Do not keep this to yourself. Do not make this the world's biggest secret. This is not the time for selfishness. Let everyone on the team know. I'll almost guarantee you, too, if you open this up to the team and show people, what are they going to do? They're going to help you. They're going to feel more part of it. They're going to offer suggestions. They're going to offer some content. They're going to offer you insights that you may not have. Share this. Don't guard this information with your life. Make it open. Also, set a budget. 
when you're talking about doing the actual campaign, you've got to have a budget. You've got to have something that's realistic because, guys, I'd love to tell you that you can just post, you can just put things out there, but social media is changing. It is becoming more and more pay to play. Sir. Yes. Great. Yes. And Travis, the answer is yes. The question is, okay, you've got your audience. How do you get that out there? That's where it helps to to boost or promote posts. And basically what you're saying is, all right, here's my audience. I'm going to do a little bit of research. And if I know my audience is primarily people that live in this area, people that have these interests, people roughly in this age range, people in this um, rough um, lifestyle range, I know that this is my audience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some targeting, and I'm going to push this information out to people just like them. Because the odds are if... If Travis and Ray have similar interests, if Travis is following me, Ray may be very interested in what I have to offer too. So when I talk about pay to play organic, that's what I'm talking about there, where you're pushing that out and, and we can talk more in detail about that, but that's how it works. Is everyone familiar with that concept? You're basically saying if these people like it, maybe these people will. These people already know about me. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay a fee, I'm gonna do some research, and I'm gonna push my information out to you guys. So it'll be available to them, and there's lots of great ways to track that. Great question, and we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more in a second. Okay, but good, good question. Set your targeting. Targeting, coincidentally, we just talked about, you can target by geography. You can target by gender, age, industry, if you're looking at certain industries, interests, and then look-alike audiences, that's what I just talked about. And then you can start to retarget people that have already engaged with you. So if someone has paid attention to you, someone has clicked on something, someone followed you, someone answered your ad, you install a little bit of software when they do that, and you can send them another ad. You can send them another post. You can send them more information so you can kind of follow them. Has anyone ever experienced that? Magically, you were looking at a certain thing weren't quite sure about it, suddenly, magically, coincidentally, there's an ad for it, it showed up again. Do you think that's an accident? More and more Big Brother knows things, and is it something that, and some people are freaked out by that. Some people go, oh my gosh, it's creepy. I worry about what Alexa's finding out in my house, all right? <laughs> it's not all sunshine and rainbows in the DeMeo house every minute, okay? But you can either Worry about it, rail against it, or you can embrace it and understand as marketers, it's great because we know what people are interested in. And, and when we talk about the future of social media, one of the things I'll talk about is we're really at the infancy stage of this. How, what is social media going to be like 20 years from now? When they have, right now they have a couple years of data on us. What's going to happen when they followed you since you were 18 years old? and now you're 40, what kind of data do they have? What does social media look like for you? How targeted are they going to be? They're going to know what you want. So it's going to evolve that way. But right now we know a lot. It's going to continue to evolve. Make sure to measure and improve. What channels generate the most traffic? What posts are performing well? Dig into your analytics, okay? Look for patterns. All these analytics are available to you. Take advantage of them. Here, here's an example of a campaign we did, Homestead Village. Their goal, they wanted to reach people for their senior communities. Familiar with Homestead Village? Now, we're trying to do this and we're trying to get targeted, and there's certain rules we have to follow, and Google keeps tightening up with privacy laws, so it gets a little bit tougher and tougher sometimes to target. So we need to just keep getting better and better. They did a campaign where they were trying to get people to their neighborhoods, find out about the farmstead. We had 53,000 we, we had a reach of 53,000. We had 165,000 impressions. Does everyone know the difference between reach and impressions? Reach is essentially like a, an individual user. 
Like if I send something to you and you looked at it, that's a reach. I sent it to you specifically. If I sent it to you and you didn't click on it, didn't look at it, but it just came to you, that's an impression. So reach is individual people. Impression is how many times I bombarded you with something. And then we had 8,000 people visit their websites. We had an ad, and every time someone clicked on it, it cost 33 cents. And there were 24 conversions. So they had 24 people actually come to look at their farmstead. Now, keep in mind, with them, that is a super low cost because when you're talking about the farmstead, they're selling homes that start at about $300,000. So for us to generate 24 people to come take a tour, they generally figure if they have eight people take a tour, they sell somebody a house. So huge campaign worth a lot of money. And, and again, a little bit of an investment, but not compared to what they spent. And this is a good example, Travis, of it was a lookalike audience. We know who goes to, we know who their clients are. So we targeted an audience just like them and send it out. Because if you want to live in Homestead, I might want to live in Homestead or Farmstead specifically. Social media, analytics. What do you want to measure? You want to measure awareness, how many impressions you had. What was the reach? And again, the difference between reach and impressions, everybody clear on that? If you're not, see me afterwards. Followers. How many people became fans and said, yeah, I'll follow you. I want to keep in mind what you have. I want to keep hearing more. Conversions. Uh, I'm sorry, I went the wrong way. Engagement. How many likes, comments, shares, web traffic? Customer service. How many customer inquiries were handled? What were the reviews? What was the sentiment from this? What was the retention rate? And lastly, conversions. We did all this. We measured it. And what was the money? How many people clicked through to the money pages? How many people filled out forms? How many people went on and downloaded content? Because the idea is we want to engage them. First bring them in, then they download content. They maybe downloaded a brochure. Free information you were handing out. Things to help them with their education. Analytic tools. The first two we're going to talk about are free. Available to everyone, costs no money. Platform insights, Facebook insights, LinkedIn analytics, okay? For all these different platforms, there is free analytics that go along with it. Again, don't cost you anything and tell you almost everything you need to know if you know where to look. Uh, Google Analytics. Everyone should have Google Analytics installed on their website free. Great tools. It lets you know who's on your site, where they came from, how long they were there, when they jumped off. Free. And then there's some paid things such as Hootsuite, Sprout Social, etc. Is one better than another? I won't say one's better, they're different. Depends on what you're looking to do and, and what you're gonna use a platform for. <coughs> Here's an example of a campaign, Melhorn Manor, okay? Their job was to try and get more weddings at this venue, all right? Here was step one in the campaign. We created separate campaigns for, for different messages, okay? We were going after different people that we may be interested in weddings and then it was we created a landing page or a way to track it so that we knew if we put things out there, who actually went to the page, who engaged, who looked at information. And then we took a look at all the analytics and tried to improve it. Here's the analytics. This is how many people were looking. You'll notice there's a point where it, it starts and it's big and then it kind of goes for a while, then it drops off. Then we do something else and it goes for a while and it drops off. You've got to refresh campaigns. You can't just do something and leave it there forever and just hope it performs. You've got to keep an eye on it. There's a start date, there's an end date. You've got to pay attention to it. And the idea is always evaluate your campaigns and try and make them better. Coming in the home stretch, right at 10 o'clock, that's pretty good, right? The future of social media. Safe to say it's evolving. Safe to say we've never lived in a generation like we're in now where we have social media, where we are now, right now things, and, and this, isn't, this isn't the future, this is right now today, things are more and more pay to play. If you want to be involved in social media, yes, you've got to post, you've got to continue to do good content, you've got to continue to engage, but you've also got to pay a little bit to boost those posts. You've got to get in ads, you've got to get in promotional posts, you've got to do contests. You've got to do different things if you really want to engage. Video, all right? Again, this isn't the future. If you don't have good video, good news and bad news. 
Bad news is you're behind. The good news is so is everybody else, all right? The bottom line is who's gonna catch up the fastest? Get some video, make it relevant, find, like do your research first, find out what people are looking for. But if you are not offering decent video, you're behind. Again, so is everyone else, so it's not horrible, but it's time to catch up. AI, artificial intelligence. Big brother knows what? Everything. And big brother, and, and again, that's not the future. Big brother knows now. AI is listening. AI is responsive. AI is intuitive. AI is trying to make things better and better. And again, we can be upset by it. We can rail against it. We can talk about the conspiracy. We can wear tinfoil hats, okay? But the bottom line is it's here. You might as well get in on it, okay? Messenger and chat. Does anyone have a chat feature on their site or on their social media where they can, anybody? Valuable tool because when do people want answers nowadays? Now. It used to be, who, who here has been in business over 10 years? Okay. In the old days, old days, let's say 10 or 20 years ago. Okay, I've been in business 76 years as of this morning. In the old days, what was reasonable for you to get back to someone if they asked you a question in business? A week? Anybody else? A day, close a business, depending on the business and what it is. How about today? If you don't respond to an email within an hour, what do people think? Are, are you okay? <laughs> did, did so, well, uh, what, so what, you don't want my business? I'll go somewhere else. I, I, I've heard that where you know, a guy said, look, if it takes you an hour to respond to my business, I guess you're too busy to do business with me. Yes, I am, okay? People want to know now. People don't want to know five minutes from now, five hours from now. Live chat, if you can do it, live chat's a great way to do it. And Stacy, I don't mean to scare you with that. If you can have someone to do it, it's a great feature. And, and if not, just understand, people want to know right now, so respond. Is it safe to say now the, the expectation is by end of day? Like, you don't go home without returning emails, phone calls, whatever. And if you can do it sooner than that, I like to say anything in the mornings before lunch, anything after lunch is before end of day. My, my rule, okay? And then one of the things, the best thing you can do right now, did we have a question? Sorry. No, Chris, that's too much to hope for. Just authenticity and story. People are looking for real. People are looking for authentic. People are looking for conversations. Make sure the conversations are worthwhile. Conversations can't be dull. Conversations can't be self-serving. Conversations can't be about one person bloviating and the other person enduring that bloviation. It has to be about interaction and I've got something interesting to say. Make sure that that's the case in your engagement and in your social media. And the bottom line is social media is a great way to tell your story. What's one thing that's unique about your business and what you do that is different from everybody else that does business? It's your story. No one is exactly like you. Yes, there are people that do the same things as you. Maybe they do them better, maybe they don't. But the bottom line is we all have our own unique story. Social media is a great way to tell that story. Where we're going in the future, and again, our speculation Double down on storytelling. If you told a great story before, guess what everyone's doing now? They're telling great stories. Do you think you're the only people that are in a class like this or learning something like this in the world? No, everyone's getting better at it. We need to be just a little better than them. And the people that didn't get up this morning and come in here, ha, get a little edge on them, okay? If you're good at storytelling, get great at storytelling. If you're telling some stories, tell more stories. If it's engaging, make it more engaging. Show people your heart and be brave enough to show people what you're all about. What's also the future, we believe niche marketing, small communities. Meaning people are gonna start to focus on specific topic, specific points of interest. They're gonna wanna stay in communities where they can learn from each other, other experts in the industry. It's more about family. It's about, you're my family, you understand what I'm going for. No one knows what it's like to be a broadcaster like other broadcasters. No one understands the real estate industry better than the real estate industry. It's about things like that where people go for the right kind of information. Influencer marketing. 
It's about endorsements. It's about people that like your products. It's about people with big names that do it. One of the things we talk about, influencer marketing, I'm going to throw a couple names out there. Tell me if you've heard of them before. PewDiePie. So you know who PewDiePie is? That's the guy who made a fortune with Fortnite. He was the best Fortnite. Does anyone have kids that play Fortnite? Anyone here play Fortnite? Number one. Anyone? You can admit it. Um, anyone have kids that play Fortnite? We do. PewDiePie is like the, the Fortnite expert. How about this one? James Charles. All right, James Charles is the makeup industry. He is a, a man who has made a great living with wearing his own makeup, having his own line of makeup, and he's got millions and millions of followers. He had a little run-in recently where he offended a lot of people. You heard about that? And he had 28 million followers or something. Three million followers bailed on him. Okay, not the best thing that ever happened to him, but it happened. So social, uh, influencers are a big deal. Who did, I, who did I miss out on? Oh, um, oh, I'm sorry, and I messed up. PewDiePie is the most subscribed person on YouTube. He's not the Fortnite guy. That was Ninja. Sorry, Kelly, I stepped all over your good information. Okay, PewDiePie is the most viewed pers person on YouTube. That's a pretty big accomplishment. Okay. And what else is changing? Social commerce and meaning that people will start to do business or, or more and more do business on social media. You will buy everything directly from social media. And then regulation. The government is saying, oh my gosh, Facebook is getting too big. You control this and this and this. What's the most famous line from that hearing, Kelly? Social media, someone under fire from the government. We sell ads, Senator. Yeah. He didn't understand how Facebook could make money. Well, I don't understand what you're doing. All these people are doing it. How do you make money? We sell ads, Senator. Okay. But more and more there's regulation. More and more there's rules. More and more we've got to be careful how we do it. And again, you've got to stay on top of it. The way we did it six months ago is not the way we do it today. The way we do it today probably won't be the way we do it six months from now. If you want to continue to be effective, you've got to evolve, change, get better and better and better. Recap. Social media is about conversation. Always start. Start a conversation with understanding what your clients, what your ideal target market wants, and then get a strategy to make sure you reach that. Focus your efforts, Stacy. Don't try and do everything. Focus your efforts on one or two channels. Do one channel well. Do one post well. Start there. Don't let it get overwhelming. How do you eat an elephant? Bite at a time. Focus your efforts on one or two channels. Prioritize relationships first. Don't go in there and try and sell. Build a relationship. Make a friend. Make someone who thinks you're interesting. Make someone who, who feels like, hey, that might be a pretty good company to do, to, to do business with. Whew. Coming to the end here. Mouth isn't working. Or more importantly, hey, I like the way they think. They think like I do. I'm going to pay attention to these guys. And create an organized content calendar. Make sure. Put it in writing. What's the difference between a strategy and a wish? Put it in writing. What's the difference between a goal and a wish? Put it in writing. Know what your plan is. Don't get there by accident. Get there because you had a clear, concise plan. And lastly, social media is changing. You've got to change with it. You've got to pay attention. You've got to read. You've got to look at things. And it's OK to ask for help. Whew. Thank you. I'm tired. Are you guys tired? <laughs> tired of listening to you. All right, thank you. Good. Any, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Huh. The, the question is, what should the response time be for live chat? My, my wishy-washy but honest answer is, as fast as you can. Um, yeah, if you, it should be live. I mean, literally, while they're on there. And, and you've got to be careful, too, because you can, you can absolutely freak people out if they're looking at your site and suddenly you're going, hey, can I help you? <laughs> no. It's just like it's the equivalent of you're shopping for clothes, you're in the store, and all of a sudden someone's here, can I help you? All right? Sure. It, it can be the equivalent of that. So you've got to be careful. But my honest answer is, as fast as you can. 
We're fortunate in that. We, we have someone live chat weekdays, but I don't pay someone live chat weekends, evenings, things like that. We have some, and again, they have other jobs to do. It's not like I'm just waiting for the phone to ring or they're waiting to chat, but as fast as you can. And say that again, Kelly. Right. And, and we have someone like there's number one, number two, number three. We have George. Kelly, Danielle, or George, Danielle, Kelly, I'm not sure, if, did I get the order right? We're, yeah, and, and, and some people are like, Ooh. other people, like if they're asking for help, say, you know what, thank you, that was really great that you're on top of that. So, good, good, good question. Uh, other questions, sir? Yes, so, so yes. You should definitely have someone that's dedicated to posting on the company page, but you absolutely should all be posting on your individual LinkedIn pages. And some of it is going to be the same information, oftentimes, and some of it's going to be unique. But at the very least, even if you don't repost what someone in the company says, at least like what someone in your company said. Show your support. Great question. Good question. Phillies fan, not so much on that one. Sir. Oh, I thought you had a question. Do we have a question over here? You had a question? Um, yeah, as far as keeping up to date on how things are changing, obviously the media constantly, are there any like go to websites or publications that you read articles or how do Great you question. find out when algorithms change? There, there lots of good websites I'm gonna to recommend two today. One is easymarketing.com. <laughs> uh, and and we do post a lot of information on there and Kelly does our posting, so we are getting a good source. The, the site that I would recommend, there's something called Sprout Social. Um, it's one that I've done, and, and the last ones, I'll say this too. We list sources for this presentation, so at the very end, we're going to have them up there, but Kelly, Easy Marketing, Sprout Social, is there another one? How about just general knowledge? So social media examiner. John Loomer, Andrea Ball. Good. So please, and, and I'll, I'll say too, reach out to Kelly. Reach out to me. I'm happy to connect with everyone on LinkedIn. Let me know. Happy to do that. And then follow some of these, uh, some of these places. And, and great point. You've got to continue to learn. You've got to continue to grow. You have to be smart enough to know you don't know everything. Okay. Other questions? Sir? Yeah. Fair, fair question. The question is, can you ever post too much? And, and there are times where people may be experiencing some fatigue, some promotion fatigue. I'll say this, though. You should post as often as you've got something relevant to say. So if it's relevant, if it caters to your audience, if it makes sense, and it's not just buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, uh, you're probably not posting too much if it's interested. And pe if you start seeing people bail, if you start to see your, your open rate decline, if you start to see people aren't looking at it, you might be posting too much, or you might be posting the wrong stuff, or to the wrong people. Lots of reasons why it's good, lots of reasons why it isn't. Okay. One more question, or are we good? I want to thank everyone for coming. I want to say, I'm going to ask everyone, please join us on June the 7th. It's also a Friday. We're going to be right here, Professional Development Friday. And we're going to talk about no BS strategies for effective SEO. Everyone's trying to make SEO something where they're telling you you wouldn't understand it. Don't even, don't even try it. You, uh, I, I won't even try and explain it to you. You won't know. BS. It's just like anything else. Break it down. There are certain best practices that help you be found. There are certain things you should be doing. We're going to explore that. We're going to review it. Love to see everybody back here for that one. So it's June the 7th. You can either... Go on our website and sign up. You can sign up through the chamber or just tell any one of my team on the way out and we're happy to register you.
And lastly, again, thank you all for coming. I appreciate your time. Hopefully we all learned a little bit today. Thank you.